Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters, and a lot of you may remember I was working on a diorama of an LCM3 unloading a Sherman on a beach diorama. Well, uh, a little bit of a change of plans. I had someone who wanted to purchase the LCM3 with the Sherman in it just the way it was. So I decided to let him go ahead and purchase that. And I was looking at this uh, diorama base and I noticed that I saw a sunken road in there on the edge of a forest. So with a little bit of changing around, I was able to turn that diorama into this. So stay tuned and you'll see how I did it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do now to convert this into a sunken road is we need to remove this part of the wood right here so that the ground level is always being seen. We're also going to trim this out a little bit right here because this is kind of an undercut that would look kind of weird on the road, but that'll be something pretty quick and easy we can um, add on. So let's first take the uh, razor saw and just lining it up to basically what the road is right now. We'll cut straight down on that and then we'll also cut straight down over here and then right down to the base of this. I need to get a little bit bigger razor saw here because it won't go all the way to the bottom, but we'll knock that out right now. Okay, uh, I've cut out all of this area in here, including the wood, and I've cut back some of the rock right in here, or the rock work that'll be. Now, taking a rock mold that I had, I casted up some, uh, some, some sides that'll go in here that'll give it a little bit more character to the side. And what we're going to do is, using some hydrocal, we're going to fill all this back in and then put some of the rock work into the side here. And then, of course, if you were starting from scratch, you would have left this out and you'd be doing the exact same step. So let's go ahead and put some of that on there now. Okay, now we've put just one coat of this on, and to get rid of some of the rough texture, using uh, the, the same cup you did your hydrocal in, put a little extra water in there, and then using your fingers, you can start to blend all this together. Because there's already dry hydrocal on here, it wants to soak the moisture out immediately, so it's good to always put a little extra on. We're going to fill in this more with the next batch. I just kind of used the leftover right there, but right now we're concentrating on the uh, hill here. Okay, uh, you can see I've added a little bit more rock work all the way to the edge right here, and we'll clean off all that other stuff lately. But you can see how this is starting to become a cliff. Uh, don't worry too much if there's any excess here. This will all, it looks really messy in this stage, but it cleans up really, really well. So the last thing I've done is I've mixed up a really wet slurry of the hydrocal. And the reason we want to do this is because it is going to start to absorb. Of course, we've also masked all this other area off here. so. Just going to start pouring a little bit into place here. And up on these edges too that I need to refill. I'm only going to do the, the, the edge of the rock on one side because this is a little bit more of a sloped area right here, so we wouldn't notice it as much. Okay, the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to be using some of the Woodland Scenics Earth Undercoat. 
Uh, I've mixed up a little bit in a cup with a little extra water. This will thin it down and will make it a little easier to apply. And we're just going to use this as a general cover for the entire base before we start putting our other colors on it. Don't worry too much about the color of the uh, base coat here as well. This is more or less to, to soak into the, the plaster and give it a nice brown effect because we're going to go over it with some paint momentarily and we're going to start blending in the colors and make it look more like dirt. In this step right here I'm going to be using Tamiya paint. Uh, thin down regular like I would paint a model and I'm going to be using different earth tones uh, some nato brown some earth brown different browns like that and we're going to start blending it all together to make it look more like a natural surface You can see how when we start putting the different coats of paint on there, it starts to blend in and make more of a natural look to it. Now we're not going to do any more on this until we've actually added the trees, which is the next step coming up. And then, because that we're going to have to fix a little bit as we drill into the plaster to plant the trees into it. Okay, I've decided to go ahead and use some pre-made trees from a company called Model Scene. Uh, they actually look pretty decent looking and be a lot easier than having to build the individual tree. So I've got some different colors and different sizes. These represent a nice uh, forest in Germany since we're going to make kind of like a late war diorama. So we're going to go ahead and put a few of these onto the diorama right now. Okay, I've, I was trying to do some experimentation and I found that because these have a nice trunk and a nice spike to them that you can, and it's foam underneath there, we can actually just go right ahead and push these trees straight right into the plaster. And it's not going to damage the plaster very much and then we'll put a little super glue around it to hold it in place but we'll be able to build a nice little forest like that. Okay, using different colors of trees and different sizes, some dead ones, you can see how the edge of the forest starts to form. Now, I did go ahead and put a little Elmer's glue into the little cracks in a lot of them right there to hold them in place really, which will dry clear and then we'll paint over and actually cover with foliage and, and bushes, things like that. We're also planning on doing some grass around the edge and this is going to be part of a grassy field right here with a tiger or something else coming up through with figures on it as well. So I might put a few more trees on it just to kind of fill the forest out, make it look like a, a, a nice forest, and we'll keep on moving. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've airbrushed around the trees to get rid of any of the, uh, the uh, white spots that have stuck out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a mixture of white glue and water, 
and then we're going to put down our static grass. Now the way static grass works is by flexing this container as you put the par parts on, it builds up static electricity and actually makes the little particles of grass kind of stand up. So it gives it more of a grass effect. So we're going to start off in this area right here and we're going to lay down the white glue and then we'll go over and put the uh, static grass on. Also going to go ahead and put a little bit over in this area in here where grass started to form. Didn't go all the way into the forest yet but because the trees would have blocked out a lot of the light but we want a little bit of it right around the edge here. We can always add more inside there too but just a little patch will look kind of break up the, uh, the area. Okay, now that we have a good wet mix of it, put a little bit more up in here too. Because this is going to repre uh, represent the edge of a forest. So now we go ahead and take the static grass. And you want to actually pump it on. Okay, and the key with static grass is that you want to put a lot of it on, and yes, it's going to fall on there, but we're going to blow all that out after the glue dries on it. Now, you also notice, too, that I've just used one standard color of static grass. The reason I do that is I'm going to lightly go over it later on with my airbrush and mix in different variations of green color, some little dead patches. It actually looks a lot better than just putting on just one solid color of grass. I went ahead and I filled in the forest a tiny bit more with some more trees. thought it would give it a little bit more of a, of a dense forest look. <laughs> uh, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to use some of this clump foliage to make some small bushes along, all on the inside of here. And all we're going to do is just using Elmer's glue, we're just going to attach it down. Now, the, the bushes, of course, is all a solid color, just like all the other stuff. But like I said, after we're done 
putting all the scenery together, we're going to start uh, airbrushing different colors of greens into some of the bushes and things like that. So it'll it'll break it up a little bit. Fun part is getting the bushes inside between the trees because it is getting a little bit tight in there. But I, I do like the way the dense forest looks a little bit better. Okay, at this point what I've done now is I've taken my green from with my airbrush and I've cut, slightly gone over all the weeds and, and grass, tried to blend it together. And then I also had another product that actually looks like weeds that you just sprinkle on top and I fixed it down with a little uh, dull coat. Now there's a little bit of remnant down in there, we're going to blow all that out after we take it outside so it doesn't make a big mess. Um, and it's starting to look pretty good, it's starting to look like the, a sunken road on the edge of a forest. And one more quick thing, just for purposes of scale, I've put a 35th scale Tiger with Zimmerit inside of it right now to show you. Okay, the last thing I did now was I took some of my pre-made vehicles that I've done from other videos and put them on there just to kind of show you what it's going to look like. And I also took a bunch of figures, a whole Tiger crew over and through here. And then this is going to kind of represent mixed uh, uh, late war because it's a lot of mixed uniforms and a lot of units that were just put together. Uh, but that gives you a general idea how quickly you can make a diorama that looks really good to display your vehicles. As usual, I appreciate you watching all of our videos. And if you really enjoy this, please subscribe because we have a lot more videos coming. Thank you.